Hi, this is AD Burrows here for CG Masters, and today I have another quick video for you called Five Common Pitfalls for Blender Beginners. The first one I'm going to call Terrifying Key Slips. Now, Blender is shortcut key heavy, and sometimes while you're working away on the default cube, for example, this might happen. And apparently, we've now locked the entire screen. All I did was hit P, and this is Blender's game engine now playing. However, we haven't set up any game logic, so nothing is going to happen. To exit from this, all we need to do is just hit escape and then we'll be back. And in the same way, you might see everything disappear because of another slip of the keys, which is if you hit any of the numbers above the QWERTY keyboard. By default, these numbers are shortcuts to switch which layer is visible. And by default, you're on layer one. So if I press number one, we're on layer one. If you press number five, we're on layer five, which by default doesn't actually have anything in it. If you thought you were actually hitting R but slipped without really realizing and now everything is vanished, maybe take a look at these layers and these can be found in the header of the 3D view or I should say the footer really, but just click back on the top left square or press number one on the keyboard and this should get us right back to where we were. Next up is the 3D cursor. I could actually combine this in some way with the left click, right click debate as well, but rest assured when you open Blender for the first time, you're probably going to left click in the window somewhere and think, hmm, what is that target crosshair stripey red and white thing doing and why can't I select anything? Well, good question. This is the 3D cursor and the reason you aren't selecting anything is because select is on the right mouse click. So if I just right click on the lamp, you can see we've now selected it. If you really want to, you can switch that around in the user preferences where we can go file, user preferences, find the input and then select with left instead of right. But what of this mysterious 3D cursor? What is this for, you may ask? Well, this is where a new object shows up when you create it. So if I just go shift A and then add a mesh plane, for example, you can see it's now created that plane there. I'm going to press X to delete. And we can also use this as a pivot point, among other things. So if I actually right click this cube and then set our pivot point down here to the 3D cursor, you can see that now that wherever we left click on the screen will become our pivot point. Or I'm just going to switch that back to medium point. OK, fair enough, you may say. Uh, so how can we actually switch this off? Well, unfortunately, you can't. Well, not really. There are a couple of options, though. We can enable in this property sidebar, again, with the N key, you can come down to the display section and enable only render. That will remove the uh, 3D cursor as well as everything else. So that might not actually be ideal. We might just want to get rid of the 3D cursor. The only other option is the 3D cursor add-on, which is not in Blender by default. So you'll probably need to go and find this add-on here which I'll include as a link near this video somewhere. And once you have one of these versions here, one of the current versions, right click, save as, and then go to your add-ons again uh, with the user preferences. I hit control alt new there to bring that up as a shortcut. Come over to the add-ons tab, um, install from a file, navigate to where you've downloaded it. And then when you've done that, you should be able to see that show up as uh, let's see if, if I just type in cursor here, you can see I've already installed it. Just enable that. That shows up in your property sidebar at the bottom. And now if we just click on the drawer icon, you can see it's now gone. But as the warning says here, when hidden, Blender continuously redraws itself. So it eats CPU like crazy. So probably use that with caution. Uh, but in any case, this is a cool little add-on which uh, might help with that particular issue and uh, some other functionality as well. Next common pitfall is loose geometry. And this is something I can demonstrate with this cube here. If I just tab into edit mode, or which we could also just switch down here, and then just press control tab to bring up our mesh select mode. And then I want the vertices and I'm gonna right click one vertex and then shift right click the opposite vertex and then press F to fill the distance in between. Now, what you might be mistaken of thinking is that that has split this top face into two separate triangular faces, but that hasn't actually happened. If I press W to bring up the specials menu and then subdivide that vertex and then just right click it again so we have no longer have these um, corner vertices selected and then uh, just left click on this gizmo and just move it up, you can see this face is actually still just one singular unsplit face. 
This is actually quite to Blender's strengths that you can kind of create geometry like this, but it can trip up some newcomers. It's one of the ways in which we can sort of fix that if we happen to have uh, made a mistake in that kind of way and we didn't want to create a, just an edge out in space. Incidentally, we can just grab that vertex and press E to extrude right out there as well, for example. But uh, if I press A to just deselect everything, one of the ways in which we might want to try and just correct our mesh there is to just go to select and then loose geometry and then uh, not a great deal is happening there in vertex mode so maybe try edge select mode go select and then loose geometry again and then you can see that those issues are now selected and for which we can now press X and then just delete the edges and then that should have cleaned up our mesh there what we might have wanted to actually do there the method that we might have been trying to perform might have been the J key now if we have a look in face mode you can see these are now two separate faces the next issue is the connection between the object level scaling and what happens in edit mode and this is something that trips up so many people it isn't even funny uh, mm, well maybe a little bit but I have these three cubes to demonstrate this and this one in the middle perfectly fine if I just tab into edit mode and I make sure that edge is selected there what we can do is press ctrl b and then just bevel that edge and that is fine that's working completely fine but if i go to this cube and then try that stunt again if i tab into edit mode make sure that edge is selected uh the booby trapped edge and then i go ctrl b and then as you can see we're not at all getting the same kind of result as we got over there yet at the surface these two cubes pretty much look exactly the same but they're not and that is to do with the scaling of this cube that hasn't been applied compared to this cube and i'll just indicate that in a second next example i just wanted to demonstrate quickly is just in sculpting mode if we try to sculpt on this for example you can see that isn't very attractive either uh, or maybe if you're going for some sort of unusual result i guess it could be useful but all that's happened to this up cube by the way is i've if I tabbed into edit mode, I've pressed W to subdivide a few times. And then if you go control F to shade smooth, then that should set all the normals to smooth. You can also do that in the tool shelf there with the T key, just go shading smooth. That's under the tool section. And if we go to the sculpting mode again, you can see that things are really just not looking very nice at all. So just to conclude on this section, all that is to do with is the applying of the scale. So if I press N to bring up the properties sidebar, we have the scaling values here, and you can see that these should also be set to one, even though they're basically the same dimensions, two, 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 and you can see the scaling of this is one, which is why things were working on that one. This booby trapped one is scaled on the X, but they're still the same dimensions. So if we go control A to apply our scale, uh, you can see the scale values reset to one, but the dimensions remain. Tab into edit mode, try that bevel again, and then it is no longer booby trapped. And the same with this, if we go control A to scale, you'll actually notice the normals as well appear slightly differently. There's many, many things in Blender where the edit to object scaling differences are gonna affect what you're gonna see basically and how things are behaving on many tools, many features. So that's really something to bear in mind. If we go back into sculpt mode now, you might see that we get something which is a little bit more predictable. So just remember, control A in object mode just to apply the scale to get yourself out of that particular pickle. Finally, we have splitting views. And by splitting views, I'm not referring to some Blender threads you get out there with split views on paid versus free in the direction Blender should take. No, by views, I mean these windows. And by default, we're looking at five windows. One, two, three, four and a quick quiz where's the fifth yep that's it it's right up here it's just squashed up there masquerading as a menu bar that you get in a lot of programs now i'll make this point about the windows here because i've seen it just so many times for people just picking blender up and remember myself doing this actually that my biggest source of frustration was managing these windows so very quickly my biggest tip here is going to be the very first thing you do when you first start up blender if you're really new to it that is is to just come up over to the windows layout and to press the plus icon to copy this default layout that way you're working on a different layout and if you really get stuck you can get back to the default layout by just selecting it from the menu so what was I talking about when I mentioned frustration? Well, when you're used to Blender, you'll be happily gliding around, swapping views over by control, left click and dragging between two views. 
you perhaps might be shift click left clicking the corners to just pop out windows oh and by the way uh, when you do that you'll add an extra window layout so this default o2 now will be just that windows layout and you can control right arrow your way through uh, some of these views as well that's all great but for new users i've seen their view turn into this so a quick look at managing that so of course the content of each window can be found in the far left of each header bar which we can see here this is the 3d view but you'll need to make sure that you can even see those because these even can be collapsed so if i just left click on the top of the header there you can get this double arrow and then if i left click and drag you can see we've actually collapsed it so we kind of need to be a little bit careful on that there is this little plus icon that you can then click to just pop that back so very basically to split our views and create extra windows what we might want to do is go up to these sort of diagonal lines in the corner of a window just left click and you get a plus icon as well to show that you can actually do a slightly different operation than usual just left click and drag into that window and then you can kind of create a duplicate of that window and then we can swap it around to whatever we might like or you can take advantage of some of the shortcuts but i'm not going to bog you down with that just yet to remove that window you would go to uh, the one on the left here and then left click and drag and then you can see we get this arrow now and now we can sort of choose either way i'm kind of held down on the mouse i've left click and dragged and i've still not let go because as soon as i do that i'm going to collapse into a particular window uh, i'm just going to right click to escape that though and the other thing that we can actually do is just come between these get again get our double arrows and then right click and then we get this split area and join area this is basically doing the same thing i'm going to click join area and then we get this option here and then i'm just going to left click into that to split into to collapse sorry into that window now that might seem straightforward enough but the problem that arises is that you need to be collapsing into a, an equal window so as a test to try trying to collapse all the windows in the default view so we have these five windows let's try and de collapse all these we can't actually collapse this one if i left click and drag i can't collapse into this right hand side because this is one window is trying to collapse into potentially this window here because it's split in two like this so we have almost like a, a quarter pane window in a way um, but that's not going to allow us to do that what we need to do is collapse into an equally sized window which this one is the same size as this one so that's the, what we're going to need to do I'm going to go and click left click and drag into this top one and then I'm going to reverse that move by going down into the bottom and then again I can't collapse that into either of these two because they have to be kind of uh, aligned properly they have to we just need one large window here but this is the same width as this one so we can left click and drag this one perhaps and then now we have these two which are the same sort of size on the vertical so i can left click and drag there and then collapse that and then we're just left with these two windows here and again i can actually just collapse into that and now we're just left with one huge window and we can even get rid of that header and then that is uh, super expert mode. So that concludes the five common pitfalls. I'm hoping that you'll now be able to navigate around them and avoid some early frustration and get to the good stuff down the road a bit quicker. So until next time, bye for now.